Hi, this is a video on the latest BT, or in this case what seems to be happening is they're moving to the EE brand Smart Hub. So for example BT Shop has become EE Store um, and I don't think they do BT Mobile anymore, you have to use uh, EE Mobile and this has got the sticker on here explaining about the brands and what they're doing and it's the same kit and powered by EE and, and all that stuff so this has just arrived that's what the box looks like and the back so this is product smart hub item code 1121 Three three. It's got SH two SI one point zero, and nothing on the ends. Just cardboard. Let's open it up. Interesting packaging up here. The easiest way to set up control your new hub is to use the, and then something's been stuck over something else. Yeah, use the EE app, or in this one, they stuck something over it and just says app. Instructions for downloading it are in the leaflet. Let's see what this leaflet is. Same message about um, EE and BT. And then you can get the, confusingly, the My BT app, which is probably why over there it's uh, got a sticker on it saying not EE. Uh, yeah, not to use the EE app. Here's the manual, or what at least comes with it. If you do want to read this, pause the video because I'm going to just skip through all of the pages. I do need to make it so you can actually read it. It's a little bit bright. This is quite interesting or helpful for some people is what the lights mean because they're not always very obvious. So again, if that's going to be helpful for you, pause the video so that you can read those sections. Yeah, if there's a slight chance your product could be damaged by an electrical storm, we recommend you unplug the power and telephone. Interesting. Frequency information and DB transmission. And then the front of the leaflet. Cool, that's difficult to get out of the box. Oh, I see there's a little plastic tab. Ooh, very Apple-like. Not plastic, cardboard have put a paper underneath which says what's in the box the sh20a smart hub 20a power plug in two parts just means that everything the box can be smaller uh, gray network cable i oh know gray cable for the telephone filter wireless sticker and ethernet cable is in here as well anything under there yep that's where the power is Power supply, ooh, that looks very Thompson-like, or Technicolor router style. Um, it is part number or PN 131501801830J, model number S018CAM1200 and 150. Now, I'm not even going to read the bit below it, but I'm going to guess that means 12 volts at 1.5 amps. 12 volts, 1.5 amps. Yep. There we go. That clicks onto there, and the end of the plug looks like that. And indeed, you get a network cable, a DSL filter, and... Oh, sorry telephone cable, DSL filter, and a network cable there. Put these things back.
interesting package design. So this is higher at the back here. Whoops, my is focused. Higher at the back here than it is at the front. And in fact, the device itself, or at least in the packaging, is wedge-shaped. Very uh, clever, I would say. Next query, how do we open this? Uh -huh. At the ends. And there's the back of the device and the front of the device. Very strange when it's off. It feels like there should be something there. But it's just a, a big recess with no logo until you switch it on, I'm going to guess. So along the bottom, a lot of ventilation. And on the back, also a huge amount of ventilation. We then have broadband, so telephone socket that goes up to your uh, DSL-based broadband phone, which will be for the BT Digital Voice proprietary VoIP product. USB, not sure what that's used for, we'll have a look through the web interface later. Ethernet's one, two, three, and then possibly a shared Ethernet as number four or WAN for if you have full fiber, and then you plug a network cable between the WAN port and your ONT, uh, so the box that's on the wall that converts the fiber to Ethernet. Reset hole, power button, oh, sorry, power switch, and power button. On the side, we have a WPS button. And on the other side, the wireless card. So that one just says, wow, that's really badly stuck on. Uh, so need help, use bt.com slash help. And then below it, below this sticker that they've just stuck over, is all the EE branding, uh, and, it, and it would be all right if the sticker wasn't stuck on all wonky and almost coming off the edge over here. Just see what it says underneath that, if I can get that off. basically the same thing. Download the app, but instead of uh, EE branded, the sticker's got BT branding. On this side we have the wireless details, and presumably on the underside of the router there should be a copy of those as well. Yep, wireless SSID, wireless key, and admin password. Rated input, 12 volts, 1.5 amps, and the MAC address of it. And again, Smart Hub, SH20A, product number, uh -huh, proper full product number, GRV9517UAC32-2-A-SA. There's also what looks like two very strange clips here, with a bit of detritus in one of them as well. Hmm, a bit of packing material or something. I'm curious, do, they, do these clips let you remove something? It does look like this bottom plate would remove. Now, I'll come back to that. If uh, I find that you can remove that, there will be another video that I will post. And on that subject, there will be another video on the web admin interface of this router and also another one on how to factory reset it. So if you're interested in more, then have a look in the description of this video and there'll be the links to any of the other videos which I've made about this router. Like usual with the BT hubs, a very, very long lead. I wish other routers would come with long leads because quite often the power socket that you want to use is a uh, frustrating distance away from where the router needs to sit. So I've plugged that in, haven't switched it on yet. Um, I will move this closer, see if I can change the lighting in here so that it's not going to be so washed out by the sun. And let's turn it on.
So the light isn't very clear unless you're looking at it at an angle. And on the video like that, it looks like a smiley face. And that's quite brilliant. Um, but if you see if I move it around, it's just uh, that's what the light is within there. It's not designed to look like a smiley face, just an artifact of uh, the angle of where the camera is. When you look at it straight on, the brightness is not really that easy to see. As you can see, I don't have internet because nothing's plugged into it. Um, again, I might do that in, a, in another video. It's flashing purple. If your hub is connected to a hybrid connect, light up purple. But where's flashing purple? Probably on another page. Flashing purple. Your hub is working, but the broadband cable isn't connected, yet, which indeed it isn't. Check if the broadband cable is plugged in correctly. And if you're using a filter, or set up a hybrid connect if you have one. So. That is about as far as we can go with this video. Hopefully it's been helpful to you. If it has, it would be really helpful to me if you wouldn't mind subscribing to my YouTube channel. You don't need to have the video notifications switched on, but the subscriber numbers really do help. Thank you very much. And also do look in the description for links to other videos about this router. That was interesting. Just a word of warning for people who might be wanting to use one of these as a wireless access point only. Um, so after I'd finished filming that first bit of the video, I was then editing it, and this thing was on over in the corner of the, the room, and suddenly it went click click, and seems to have gone back to a solid green, which I think is it booting up. So I suspect if you're going to use this as an access point, and it doesn't have the internet, it will just consistently reboot and drop all of its clients that are connected.